All right. Well, welcome everybody. Just get going here. Well, uh, so go ahead and chat in where you're logging in from today inside the chat window, and uh, we'll take a look at that and see everybody's uh, tuning in today. I'm John Lay. I'm the CEO and lead analyst of Talented Learning, an independent uh, learning system and LMS uh, research firm. And our presentation uh, for you today is the rise of intelligent uh, learning platforms. And uh, as always at Talented Learning, this is our 91st episode of our thought leadership webinar series. And in all of them, we try to do the same thing, which is find the world's leading experts and most interesting experts to talk about and educate us about technology and case studies and the application of learning systems and intelligent learning systems in this case. And, and today is no different as we have a, a great lineup uh, lined up for you to, today. Uh, this is uh, being co-sponsored, produced by Town to Learning, but co-sponsored by Cypher Learning. And uh, our guest today is from Educational uh, Design Lab. And so uh, uh, our two guests today, we'll start off with uh, the, the first and probably the most important is uh, Dr. Tara Lawlin. Uh, she is an instructional or educational designer with a specialty in uh, micro -creden credentialing, which is certainly one of the hottest topics uh, in the industry right now. And uh, for good reason, as we'll, we'll learn today, as it's very applicable, or it is applicable uh, to real life and to uh, really tie in skills and, and liveliness, your liveliness uh, together uh, with uh, perhaps non-education or non-university uh, based education. She spent her entire career helping youth and, and adults uh, develop skills needed for the future of work by leading design and facilitation of personalized and competency-based uh, learning experience. She brings over 15 years of experience and working across K-12, higher education and business. And at the Educational Design Lab, uh, she's involved in a super cool project that we're gonna learn all about today, connecting real life experiences uh, to educational uh, competencies, all to provide a real impact on uh, professionals trying to transition their way into the workforce and uh, make an impact. And uh, we're excited to, to get in deep. That'll be on the second half of our uh, presentation today, uh, where we'll have Tara take the lead. Tara, thanks very much for joining us today. It's great to have you here. Thank you. All right. And of course, we know Graham Glass uh, Graham's uh, a known quantity here, talented learning, uh, former uh, on the podcast and also uh, on a, another webinar. Uh, he's the CEO and founder of Cypher Learning. Cypher is one of the most exciting uh, new learning, not necessarily new, like exciting learning systems in the learning system marketplace today because it uniquely uh, goes across a lot of different use cases and has approached the learning system market in, a, in an innovative uh, education-based uh, manner. And we're going to learn more about that. Graham's a former teacher, trainer, trainer. he published author. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's a sought after speaker all around the world uh, of in learning technology about the, the future of learning. And uh, he's able to not only paint the picture, as you'll see uh, from a word standpoint, uh, his company paints the picture of also uh, of the, the future of learning always on the innovative side of, of pushing uh, adaptive learning and pushing uh, artificial intelligence and the intelligent uh, learning platform. So Graham, it's great to have you back again. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, John. All right. So while we're uh, transitioning in, uh, here, uh, go ahead and tell us what audiences that you train uh, it, from. Well, we got people from Ghana, from California, Chicago, uh, the Caribbean, uh, British Virgin Islands, another uh, from Arizona. So we got folks from all over the place today. That's great. Go ahead, tell us about your audiences. Uh, one of the neat things about learning technology in 2022 is that it's in a lot of cases it's audience based. Are you training employees, students, you know, higher education students, your customers channels? Go ahead and put that in there as we get to know each other and uh, we'll continue on. What we're going to uh, talk about today is uh, intelligent learning systems. We got the, the right folks to, to do it here. But we're gonna start off as, you know, what is it? What is an intelligent learning system? How is that different from learning systems and LMSs that have uh, uh, occurred in the past or in the past, or maybe even in use in your organization right now? What are essential features? Like, what do we actually mean uh, when you talk about intelligent learning systems and uh, what that brings to the table from uh, an organizational, from instructor, and primarily, or 
in my view, most importantly, from a learner standpoint, uh, what are the benefits of, of all that? And, and uh, you know, why, why should you care about this? Uh, throughout this first part, we're going to have Graham or Graham's going to uh, do it through slides and also through a live presentation to kind of show how these things and concepts are working together uh, so that everybody gets a real good feel of something that you just don't get to see every day. So that's going to be the, the first half. We encourage you in uh, the chat to ask questions at the end of uh, this first part. We'll, we'll be able to ask Graham some questions, but ask them all the way through and we'll monitor them and make sure that we get them answered. If we don't get them answered during the session, we'll make sure that we follow up personally afterwards. And then we're going to uh, transition over to Tara where she's going to talk about the X Credit Project and give us a solid overview of the Educational Design Lab, what the X Credit Project is, what the problem was the solution, uh, the technology that's being used to, to drive that right now, even a little bit about the ecosystem. So we've got a lot packed in uh, to this hour, <laughs> a lot packed in as we always do. Uh, I'm sure it's our 91st episode, so you know who we are. We're independent analysts. Uh, and so uh, as we transition, I'll stop sharing right now and we'll transition over uh, to Graham. But uh, as you uh, as that happens, go ahead, Graham, take control and uh, uh, share uh, here. Uh, as you do that, I, I'd like everybody to just think about their own system right now and tell me what is one of the annoying manual tasks uh, that you're doing with your learning management system. What, what, what are just some manual things that you just can't get away, get away from, even though uh, you want to, that you, you'd love to automate it theoretically, but it's just not possible. So go ahead and put that in there and we'll uh, let Graham take over here. Graham, it's all yours. Yeah, thanks a lot, John. I have to say the most Irritating manual task for me is taking out the trash. So, <laughs> it's <laughs> coming into your 2023 get, release. I don't think that's going to get automated anytime soon. Yeah. So first of all, very nice to meet everyone around the world. Um, it's really great to, to see you all here. Uh, I'm here in Sa sunny California, going to be talking about the rise of intelligent platforms. A um, little bit about my own background. So um, a while back, I used to teach computer science at UT Dallas. Um, so in Texas, and I got a lot of uh, experience. I, I taught literally thousands of people um, in the in the field of computer science there. So that's really where I got my background in in higher ed. But then I formed a professional training uh, company that was teaching computer science all over the United States, which is where I got a strong background in corporate learning. So I kind of come from both. So one of the things I really wanted to do was to create a the state-of-the-art learning platform. Most people will call it an LMS, but it's really more than that these days. And um, one of the things that Cypher Learning did was we took the unusual um, approach of having a single underlying platform, but branded versions for the various different industries. So at this point now, we've got thousands of customers around the world. I think we've got offices in 20 countries, and we're being used in K-12, higher education, and business. So we have a lot of experience about what's going on in the in the kind of the learning platform system market in the last 10 years. But I think we're going to see a lot of innovation occurring, um, especially in the next, say, uh, five years. So um, as I mentioned, our matrix platform is what businesses use. Our NEO platform is K-20. And I'm going to focus on our matrix platform for the demo today. And the way that I'm going to introduce what are these new concepts that are occurring in intelligent learning platforms, I'm gonna kind of divide it into the, the past, the present, and then the future. And hopefully by showing you different components of past, present, and future, you'll get a really good idea about what's coming. But at the highest level, we think that these learning platforms are gonna become more proactive and help you in your educational journey, whether you are a learner or if you're an instructor. So I'm going to show you how a learner will be able to specify learning goals, and then the platform is going to start making you automatic recommendations on how to get better at the things you want to improve upon. But I do want to emphasize that I'm only going to be showing you a subset of what intelligent platforms are all about. Tara is going to give you a much deeper dive into the area of micro-credentials and how they apply in the real world. But there's also going to be technologies that will proactively help instructors to actually become better at their profession and help them to create uh, better courses. So that's the little, the, the, the slide part. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go into the demo, which is where the rubber hits the road, so to speak. So what that's I'm gonna good. do here, I'm gonna share a different screen. 
and hopefully you guys can all see this. So I'm going to start with the, the past. So probably, you know, five to 10 years ago, learning management systems were primarily about create a course, people enroll in the course, you track their progress, and, um, and you can generate reports based on these things. And as you can see, this is, a, this is the, the matrix platform. And if I scroll down here, this is a widget showing you the courses that you might be teaching or the courses you might be enrolled in. And I can show you what a typical course would, tip, would normally look like. Um, I'll use this one here. Um, let's go into a typical course. Course normally made up of a bunch of modules. And within those modules, you would find content. So in this particular course, it's made out of 12 modules. And if I go into a piece of content, um, here might be, for example, the very first section. So nothing that I've shown you is innovative. This is just like standard learning platform. Um, I do like to think that we've got a beautiful user interface, but nevertheless, there's nothing that I've shown you so far that wasn't available you know, five years ago. And I can click here in my learners tab and I can see here's where everyone's up in the course and here is their progress. So that's kind of like the past. So now let's talk about the present. So in the last few years, there's been several features that um, are becoming adopted slowly but surely and was accelerated a little bit by the advent of the pandemic. So a lot of people, for example, would say, you know, my learners are no longer sitting in my, in my you know, course room. They're actually remote all over the world asynchronously. How do we actually create materials that are engaging, that are delight our students so they don't just you know, tune out? And, and John and I, we did a webinar together specifically about how to create engaging content. So as an instructor, I typically thought of the material as kind of an education voyage, uh, kind of almost like a, a screenwriter. And there are certain parts throughout a course might, where you might want to give the students additional encouragement. You might want to reveal some some secret or some enhanced content. Um, you might want to give them points and badges and have them competing against their, their various teams. So one of the features that's more in the present, but it's becoming more popular is something called automation. So I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples of automation. You might want to say, for example, when you complete a course, I want to do the following set of automated actions. And you can use these automation actions anywhere. When you first enroll, when a certain time period has passed, when you finish a particular module, when you do really good in the quiz, when you're added to a group. And so all over the place, you can pepper these automation actions. And these actions can actually be quite sophisticated. So, for example, if you're into adaptive learning, which we very much are, you can hide or show assessments or bits of content or entire modules so that you can control exactly uh, and provide a personalized pathway through the materials. If you're into gamification, which I highly recommend you are because it's way more powerful and popular than even, even we thought, you can award badges and certificates and e-commerce coupons and points at any point through your educational journey. If you're into uh, integrations, like let's just say you want to issue a badge to Credly, which is Tara is going to be talking about later, or you want to post webhooks or you into your XAPI, there's a lot of different things that you can do uh, through the journey. And some of you who are into tagging, you can even dynamically add tags. So automation is like a really critical part to create an engaging user experience, but it's very much still in the present. Like everything I'm showing you is available commercially today. So we talked about automation, gamification, I'm going to mention one other super important thing that's a key part for moving education into the future, which is competency-based learning. So when I used to teach at university or I was teaching in, in corporate America, a lot of the time you'd have the concept of a grade or a score. So you would say, how are you doing in database design? Oh, I've got a B plus. But that B plus does not tell you which specific concepts you are having problems with which specific concepts that you are doing great in, it just doesn't give you a very detailed sort of model of the student's capabilities. So one of the new things that's becoming more popular in competency-based learning allows you to create these things that we call competency groups. It's groups of related competencies, basically. 
So in this fictitious course, Design Fundamentals that you're looking at right now, one of the groups of competencies that this course might teach would be called Design Basics. And notice it's actually fairly detailed. There's a little hierarchy of all the bits and pieces that you're gonna be learning in this particular competency group, whether it's designing logos, white space, color theory, grid theory, a lot of little detailed aspects. And once you've set up a course and you say it's covering these group of competencies, then the nice thing you can do is that you can tag each module with the competencies that it's teaching and you can tag each assessment with the competencies that it's assessing. So as the student goes through the course, you can get a really good idea of which things they are mastering and which things they're not. So just imagine I'm teaching 100 people or 1,000 people or 10,000 people. As an instructor, I can just click on learners here and I can see now color theory and everyone's current rating in all of these specific values. And the little star, by the way, indicates that you've mastered it. And you can set up a mastery threshold and say, hey, if you get over 60% with two data measurements, then I'm going to consider uh, you, that you having mastered this. So competency-based learning is very popular now in K-20. through It's also pretty popular in the world of business. So we've got customers, say, in Australia who are taking water management. And there's a standard in Australia with like a thousand competencies all of which you have to master in order to get your certification in water management. But as you can imagine, it's a really great way to have a very detailed view on how a learner is doing. But the, mo the more important thing about competencies is that they can be aggregated across a whole bunch of courses and a whole bunch of sources. So you might take an assessment from one company and get a competency value for a particular thing. You might take another course from a different company and get another competency value. And then you can tie all these things together and aggregate them and get a really good view of your overall competency in a particular subject. And what's really cool is you can actually use automation in conjunction with competencies. So you can say, if you're falling behind this particular competency for more than two days, then automatically send out a recommendation to the learner, which might be a book on Amazon or a really great video on YouTube to get better. And that's when things start getting really interesting for me because I know that when I was teaching in higher ed, I had office hours. And that was my one time to give personalized feedback to my individual learners. Because there's no way, in a, I used to have 100 people in my course, there's no way you can do that in real time. Mm -hmm. Whereas now using a platform like Matrix, you can attach all these competencies and you can give automated recommendations, night or day when I'm asleep, I can, fire and forget recommendations to people taking my courses which is really powerful mm -hmm. last thing i'm going to show you because we're still in the present we haven't got to the future yet all right is how this thing gets aggregated so for example um i'm gonna if i go to a, a, a learner view so i've got my tried and true and tested learner here called sally johnson and what i can do here if Sally's taking all these courses and all these courses are consistently tagged with competencies, then there's this little mastery widget. And what this allows you to do by clicking on say design basics, what it's showing me is if I aggregate all the data points from all these different sources and then do a calculation, I can see, okay, you've got two measurements for this one, one measurement for this one. These are the ones that you've mastered. Here are the ones that you haven't mastered yet. Mm -hmm. So we're still in the in the present, but as you can see, we've gone a long way from the old days of the past. Here's a course, enroll in the course, get a certificate. Now we're talking about sophisticated automation and competency-based learning and gamification, all kinds of good stuff. But now, drum roll, the future. So what I'm going <laughs> to do, I'm going to um, install this new feature, which will be commercially available very soon. And in the world of matrix, this typically comes under the heading of skills development, although it really is a more powerful general concept. So now let's take a look at what is the difference in the user interface before and after, and see how many of you have got eagle eyes. So on my dashboard, if I scroll down, 
Everything's looking the same, not a big deal. Oopsie, what's this? A new widget, goals. And this one here, another new widget, recommendations. So the general idea here is that in the future, either you can give the platform learning goals or they can be assigned to you by mentors or if you're in college, maybe by, by your department or if you're in business, maybe by your manager. And these goals are gonna represent groups of competencies. So for example, I can say, I'm gonna add a new learning goal. And this learning goal might be a job that you're interested in getting. So for example, if I am a, um, I'm just a regular marketing manager, but I wanna become a digital marketing manager, I can say, hey, I really am interested in this particular career path. And it doesn't have to be just your current job, it doesn't have to be your future job, it might be something you're just genuinely interested in. And now what you'll see is digital marketing manager appears in my list of goals. And if I click on a particular goal, and I'll show you a learner view that's actually made some progress, what you will see here is that this particular job is associated with these 19 competencies. So what I'm showing you now about goals and recommendations, it's, it's all layered on top of competencies as the kind of the currency for skills or currency for knowledge. So what it's saying, if you're really interested in this job, you need to master all of these competencies. But currently, I haven't mastered any of them because I'm not actually a learner in the system. But I am going to about to show you um, what it looks like from a learner's perspective. Going back here, not only can I do, say, a job, but let's just say I'm in higher education. Or no, actually, let's just use K through 12. And I'm in Common Core Standards in the United States. And I want to get good at a particular grade three physics or something. That's no problem at all. I can say, I'm going to add a new goal. And this goal is going to be a set of competencies. Now, in our NEO system, which is very similar to Matrix, we have thousands of pre-built um, competency standards from countries like the Philippines, United States, Australia, et cetera. And you can just pick this group of competencies. You know, I want to get good at color theory and design. And now what you'll see is that this goal also shows up here color theory and design. Now, the nice thing is once the system knows what your goals are, it therefore knows all the competencies that you want to get good at. But it also knows, thanks to the technology in the present, which ones you've currently already mastered and which ones you haven't mastered. So it's fairly simple to do a gap analysis between what you need to get good at, what are you currently good at? And then based on that gap, it can start making recommendations. So we don't just want to track your goals. Now we actually want to proactively say, hey, if you actually want to become a digital marketing manager, then this particular course will help you to get better at that. And I can click on that recommendation to join the course. Now there's a lot of different kinds of recommendations that you can give. So if I go to the skills area on the site, this will give you a, a, a flavor. And this is going to expand rapidly over time. These are just the initial ones. So. What kinds of recommendations do you want to generate automatically? So you can say, hey, I want to recommend courses that have relevant competencies. And for the record, these courses don't have to be in matrix. These can be courses to, you know, you know, some, some competitors platform. They can be open courses. They can be courses on Coursera. It doesn't make any difference. So the goal is not to only recommend things in your own learning platform. It's to recommend things throughout the world. This second one, I think, is pretty novel. I'm not aware of any company that's doing this, but we can recommend joining social communities for learning. So one of the cool things is that you can go, you can create a group. So let's just say you've got a group talking about graphic design and you can tag the group with competencies. So we're not talking about a module. We're not talking about an assessment. You can say people who hang out in this group, if you hang out long enough, you're probably going to get better at the following competencies. So now I can recommend, hey, join this particular social network and you might actually learn more. And then another obvious one is resources. So you can upload thousands of resources. They could be videos linked to YouTube, uploaded videos, PDF files, question banks, anything that you want. And then if those resources are tagged with competencies that, you, that is, are your goals, but you're not good at, we can automatically recommend them and you click on them. And for example, you can watch the video. So you actually have quite good control over what kinds of recommendations are made. 
And we actually plan on opening up the API so you can actually call a third party service to get recommendations, which will then serve as a matrix because we really, really want to get as many people plugging into our system um, as we can. And last but not least, um, you can also add automation to these things. So, you know, Tara is going to be mentioning a lot more about micro credentials, but you could say when you achieve a particular goal, then I want you to come along and issue a badge to Credly, as an example. So there's a lot of things that you can do to kind of track the progress um, as you go. So what I'm going to finish with here, I'm going to go to a, a learner view and kind of show you what it looks like to a learner. So here's Sally. So in Sally's case, she's added a few goals. So she wants to be a digital marketing manager. She'd like to get good at graphic design. And if I click on this particular goal, you'll notice now that Sally is actually doing pretty good. She's already 67% towards mastering this particular goal. She can see all the data points that have been gathered so far. She can even click on details and it will tell you exactly where all these measurements came from. So if some of these data measurements were coming through an external API from a third party system, they would show up. This third party gave you this particular competency rating. So you get a really nice dashboard um, for these goals. You can pause goals. Let's just say you don't want to see, receive recommendations for a few weeks because you're going to go on vacation. You can remove the goals. If I want to see the specific recommendations, it's telling me here, here are all the things that, uh, that you can do. And we're also going to be introducing something called learning circles, which is a, which is a, which brings together community members with a very similar goal. And, with, and it's going to be gamified so you can earn points and badges by answering questions and helping other people to get towards their learning goals. Now, this is just the kind of the beginning of intelligent learning platforms. This is I focused for this particular webinar on how supporting goals and recommendations can move the platform to become more proactive. So it's not just sitting there and hosting courses, but it's actually providing advice. But we're working on a whole bunch of additional features that will provide similar recommendations and advice to the instructors. So if you're building a course, it might say, hey, you should watch these three students. It looks like they're at risk. Or, hey, there are some really good videos that we think you might want to incorporate into your courses based on which competencies that they are tracking. The last thing I want to mention is when people talk about intelligent learning platforms, they tend to think, oh my goodness, this is a completely new product. It's going to have a whole new interface, a whole new paradigm. And one of my main goals was, was to show you guys that if you start adding things like goals and recommendations, they can be incorporated very nicely into a state-of-the-art uh, platform like Matrix with very little additional visual clutter. And it feels like a very natural evolution of this product line. So I hope that was useful. I will stop sharing right now and, and open it up for any, any questions that you guys might have. All right, well, we only got 25 questions. Uh, so that's, uh, <laughs> I guess we're short on time already. Like we, have to talk really fast. Like you're really fast. Uh, thanks, Graham. That's really cool to, to, to see what you're putting together. We're gonna have to follow up audience with some of these questions, but just a, a couple of them. Graham, where do the where do the, the competencies come from? Is it the organization's responsibility to define that hierarchy you were showing? Uh, it's actually, um, it's optional. So for example, there are, are some, standard competencies out there. So if you're in K through 20, there are standard competencies for Common Core Math, for Philippines, science standards, et cetera. So in those cases, we just, you can either upload them or we can import them from a third party file, but we, we kind of bake in a lot of those standard competencies. Whereas a majority of businesses, they probably have their own internal competencies. So Cypher Learning, we use our own product. We're eating our own dog food, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So we've created our own internal competency hierarchies for technical support and digital marketing manager and engineering as an example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the, the courses themselves uh, at this point, uh, that's the organization's responsibility to, uh, to populate the, the, the courses uh, in, in the system that they want. Uh, yeah, so once again, that's actually up to the organization. So we integrate with several third party course catalogs like GoOne, Udemy and LinkedIn, mm -hmm. but we've got a state of the art course builder, but, 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 um, built into matrix. So I would say probably 90% of the courses are created by our customers. 
because they've got specific things that are not available off the shelf, but they might want to pull things like, you know, sexual harassment and, you know, various legal compliance courses off the shelf because they don't really want to create those courses themselves. I see. I see. Great. Thanks. Is it fair to, to, uh, to classify uh, an intelligent learning platform as an LMS and an LXP? Is that I, I a right so. way to look at it? Yeah, I mean, I've always found the LXP uh, what, um, to be like a, a kind of an odd interim thing. I, I really don't think that an LXP per se will actually survive as a separate thing. I think there was a time where you had traditional LMSs, then you had companies coming in focusing entirely on kind of skills development. And at that point in time, it made sense perhaps to have a separate category. But, you know, my guess is people don't really like to have lots and lots of different terms. My guess is that either the LMS category will just simply expand to absorb skills development and intelligence stuff and will keep on calling it a learning LMS. Mm -hmm. Or what, what we've tried to do is we just call ourselves a learning platform because really it's the focus is on the learning. It's not just the management. So that's just my prediction. I've got no idea, but you're absolutely right. What you just saw was basically LMS plus LXP if you're kind of following those terms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, last question here, uh, Tara, feel free to take over, uh, share it here and, and uh, get yours teed up. Last question is, uh, can you use this concept of the, the competencies uh, and the goals and the achievement of such to monetize some of this content? Does, is there oh, a... Yeah, yeah, certainly. So there are, there are people who are going to set a learning goal. And based on those learning goals, it will make recommendations to do certain things. And those things that you do, like I'm going to get better at a certain thing, can cost money. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's almost like Amazon recommends you buying all these things. But when you go and buy them, it makes money for Amazon and the, and the sellers. Mm -hmm. um, there, there might also be uh, people who actually make money by issuing the credentials themselves. Um, but, but certainly you can monetize any educational materials that you help that help people to get towards their learning goals. Wow. Great. Excellent. Excellent. Great information. Tara, it's all yours. Let's, that was all theoretical of what you could do in life. Let's see what, what, what you're really doing in life here. Bring it home for us. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, John. Um, hello everyone. Very happy to be here today. Just so you all know, um, I am Tara Laughlin. I, uh, work for an, an educational nonprofit called Education Design Lab, and we are currently a customer of Cypher Learning using the Matrix platform, which you will see here featured in my presentation today. And so you can consider this part of the presentation a bit of a case study um, in one, one way that we're leveraging the Matrix platform alongside actually multiple other technologies, which you'll get to hear about today, as part of a broader uh, skills-based ecosystem initiative. And this project is called X-Credit. And so what, what is X-Credit? Well, the X stands for experience. Uh, and so what we are really looking to do is um, honor the fact that we know that individuals have skills uh, within themselves that they simply have no formal recognition for. Uh, we know that degrees exist, certificates and certifications exist as visible evidence of the skills that someone has, but they certainly do not capture everything. And I love this graphic because it shows how much, kind of like an iceberg, how much is hidden below the surface of any given person. And so, Really, the, the goal of the X Credit Initiative is to capture and validate and surface and make visible these skills that people have so that they uh, can use them as currency for future opportunities to connect, be connected with employers who are searching for people with those skills. And we do this through micro credentialing. So at Education Design Lab, we do offer nine. Um, micro credentials specifically focused on what we call 21st century skills that's a term um, you know that we use a lot of people call these things soft skills or essential skills or non-cognitive skills i don't love that one it implies that they do not require the brain which is not true <laughs> uh, human skills durable skills you may know these things by a variety of names but these are the things we're talking about and that we are looking to capture, to validate, and to, to credential for people. 
So really the big picture goals of the X credit initiative, you can see um, sort of the, the scope the, the scope of the project. We are just now ending the, uh, uh, nearing the end of year one of the project and about to transition into phase two. We changed the term there because we're no longer thinking in terms of years, but rather broader buckets of time. And so the theory is that if we are able to develop scalable ways to validate people's existing 21st century skills, that means we can translate their prior experience into credentials which requires seamless data flows throughout an educational ecosystem, which you'll get to see in this presentation, in order for those credentialed individuals to be connected to and earn better jobs with the ultimate imperative of scaling to increase equitable access opportunity and income. So this is an equity, um, an equity initiative at its core. So the problem we're trying to solve here, you can see in this image, a single mother, uh, we can only assume that she's taking online classes while also clearly parenting a very young child. Um, and she's learning all the while, right? She is developing skills such as time management, um, just in this one brief snapshot of her life over the course of her everyday life that can be just as meaningful as the skills signaled by a certification. Yet, it goes largely unrecognized by educational institutions and employers, it's hidden. And so the solution is to be able to capture and validate those skills, to credential those skills in order to signal them to employers. And so um, as in, in the X Credit Initiative, we've come up with three approaches for doing this, for actually capturing and validating those skills. You can see those listed here in the bullet points. So we are approaching this from an assessment perspective, actually developing some next generation assessments um, using simulation based and extended reality technology. Uh, where the learners are engaging with avatars and virtual humans as a way to measure their 21st century skills. Something we're calling skills artifacts, which really is looking at how we can leverage the gig economy and crowdsourced information as evidence of a person's skills. And then skill translation, um, really, we are, the use case where we're doing that right now is with the United States military and looking to translate a person's military experience into aligned 21st century skills and competencies. So three wow. different approaches to validating skills there. This is the set of partners that we're working with uh, in this initiative. You can, of course, see Graham's uh, company here, Cypher Learning Matrix on the left, along with Credly, Muzzy Lane, MyHub, uh, which is under the umbrella of National Student Clearinghouse, um, Solutions for Information Design and Tailspin. So we've taken all of these project partners and we are establishing integrations among all of these technologies in service of the learner earner, uh, right? Because these people are not all necessarily, the people we are trying to, to help are not all necessarily enrolled in courses at any given time. They're just living their lives, right? They're going to work, they're parenting, they might be taking care of a sick family member, whatever the case may be. So learner earner is the term we really like. And when they enter into this ecosystem that we've developed, we've really tried to establish a seamless way to capture, to validate, and to credential uh, the skills that these people have. And so I'm gonna actually be giving you a deep dive into how this ecosystem prototype um, functions. So now we're going to go into the X Credit ecosystem. So let me stop sharing my slides and actually share with you this as Miro board. As you're jumping in, Tara, could you just define real quickly a little bit more what, what that artifact means, a crowdsourcing of a skill? Absolutely. I will make a quick plug too that in about 24 hours tomorrow, we're doing an event specifically focused on the X credit artifacts. Mm -hmm. Happy to give more information to anyone who's interested. It's a 90 minute session really digging into that topic. Wow. But it's looking at how we can, uh, knowing that millions and millions of Americans are using the gig economy, um, 
driving for Uber, delivering for DoorDash and Grubhub. Um, and I, I say Americans, but I should expand that more broadly. I know that the gig economy is not limited solely to America, but it's actually internationally. Um, crafting and selling things on Etsy, renting out their properties on Airbnb, walking dogs for people. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Hmm. But through these, through these um, um, platforms, you know, they're performing services for other people. And the data about their performance is being crowdsourced, right? We might be able to find that someone has 500 five-star ratings and certain keywords that surface uh, related to their customer service or some other aspect of their performance. And so the question we're investigating there, which again is separate from the topic of today's conversation, but happy to share more with those who are interested is, how can we leverage that data set about individuals to, to elevate what 21st century skills they have to then give them the credentials um, uh, and connect them with these other technologies that we are going to talk about here today. So that's kind Out, of outstanding. Today. Thanks. Yeah, if you give me that URL, uh, Tara, on uh, that for your your session, I'll distribute that with the follow up email to this uh, webinar. And so, uh, if anybody's interested, you can just click on it. Yep. That's it. tomorrow at eleven a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Okay. So what you are looking at now is the prototype of the X credit um, skills-based ecosystem that we're established. You can see Matrix, Cypher Learning's Matrix platform here in the center of the platform. And the idea is connecting all of these technologies together so that the learner earner has a seamless experience moving through all the places and spaces they need to access in order to, um, again, to capture, to validate, to credential, and to share their skills with employers for, uh, for economic mobility and for, you know, um, opportunity in the labor market. I'm going to do my best not to zoom in and out and move around too much. Miro is not the best about that, but it's really great for a number of other things. So I'm going to zoom in and just talk briefly about each portion of this ecosystem. So our learner earner proto, uh, persona here, her name is Andrea, and she is a veteran. Uh, she has recently left the United States military. She's looking to transition into the civilian workforce and therefore is looking to validate some skills that she gained during her time in the military uh, to earn some credentials demonstrating those skills. So she's using Solid's Milgears platform to hopefully translate some of her skills upfront into credentials. So what you're seeing here are screenshots from the Milgears platform. Andrea is going to log in. She's going to click on this first option, which says engage my career. That will bring her to a screen that looks like this, where she can actually upload her joint services transcript, which is a record of her entire history in the military. That information will auto populate into the tool. It will be parsed. And based on that, she will be presented with uh, what, what's called a learning and employment record that has pulled out all of the different skills gained during her time in the military. Now that includes technical, basic, and 21st century skills. I'm going to focus for our purposes just on the 21st century skills because that's what we are validating um, as subject matter experts at Education Design Lab. So she'll have a little section of her learning and employment record that tells her she's just by virtue of her joint services transcript and the information contained there, been able to validate three of these 12 sub -comp competencies. No extra work needs to be done on her part. She's been given credit for those skills. You can see they're lit up here. So one oral communication skill, two critical thinking skills. And if she clicks this little drop down, she can actually get more information about that. These are the two that she has been given credit or validation for. But these are the two that she has not yet been given credit for. Her military experience was not able to validate these two skills. That doesn't mean she doesn't have them. So what we then do is we give her an opportunity to sort of uh, pivot to one of the other validation approaches that XCredit offers, which would be an assessment. 
So she's going to click a link here within her learning and employment record, which will, pardon my zooming here, send both Andrea and her data, represented by these two separate arrows, into the matrix platform. When she lands in the matrix platform, she starts to take advantage of some of the great automation and mastery and competency based stuff that Graham just shared with you. So she's going to land on the page to take the relevant assessment for the link she clicked. So that is embedded right here within the matrix platform. She takes her assessment, or actually I should say she takes her assessment here and or uh, she may be redirected depending on which tool she's using. Uh, we have the settings set up differently for each of our assessment platforms. So either the Muzzy Lane assessment or the Tailspin assessment and completes that. And when she is done, her scores, which are um, all competency-based, no averaging takes place. It is identifying very specific pieces of let's say critical thinking or creative problem solving, those scores are passed back into matrix. And I'm gonna zoom in on a little, uh, just a snapshot of that mastery dashboard that Graham was sharing with you earlier. So here she'll be able to see automatically um, the things that she validated, not only from her military experience, those will be lit up green, um, but also from the assessment that she just took, uh, if she demonstrated mastery on that assessment, that will also turn uh, the, the related competency green in this tracker. So a couple of things can happen at this point. We are integrated. Now she could go back and take more assessments if she wants to, first of all, that would be an option. But let's say she's all done taking assessments. There are two things that can then happen to her data, and that is uh, for her to be connected with Credly and or with MyHub, uh, which is a digital learner wallet. So Credly does offer credentials. And as Graham mentioned earlier, Matrix and Credly have an integration that we are leveraging. Um, if, if Andrea has validated all of the skills associated with a particular credential, she will be prompted to accept that credential through Credly. So you can see here, we will issue her the full, let's say critical thinking credential based on her validation. Now that's if she's able to put all the pieces of the puzzle together to, to stack them up to the full credential, which is a great goal to have but we still want her to get credit in the interim. Let's say she validates some of the skills needed for that, for that digital badge, but not all of the skills. We still want her to be able to leverage those skills in the labor market uh, to hopefully you know, be connected into better employment opportunities. So at the skill level, Andrea is also able to pass her individual um, validated skills into her learner wallet in my hub. So I'm gonna zoom in over here just so you can kind of get an idea of what that looks like. In my hub, this is a full record. Now it depends how many other data sources she might have coming in from other places. So this could be um, more robust and filled or less, but skills that she's validated by our assessments are going to appear in her learner wallet and she will have a record of all of those skills that she now owns. And she's able to share this record with potential employers uh, with her validated skills captured inside. Wow. The other thing you can see, if I zoom back out, and again, apologies for the zoom, zooming, zooming on Zoom, <laughs> is uh, cr the Credly credentials, if she does earn the full credential, those also flow into the learner wallet. So at the end of the day, she will have both her individually validated skills, as well as any higher level achievements, such as full credentials that she's been able to earn. Remember, purely by demonstration of skills that she already has. This is not about taking courses 
um, in this model. This is just about saying, we know you have skills, prove it to us, you know, give us that evidence, we will give you the credential, and you take that credential and do with it what you need to do uh, to access better opportunities. So that is a really high level, obviously, description of the ecosystem we're establishing. This is very much in progress. I just want everyone to know that. We're still deep in the weeds of the technical integrations on some of these platform connections, uh, working it out, right? There's a lot of testing that still needs to be done, but the foundational pieces have been put in place um, to align all of the systems to make this happen. So that's the, the vision for X credit and how technology is supporting all of this, um, and particularly Matrix there in the center, you know, gathering information from all of these different places and then sending it along into the where it needs to go next. Wow. Holy cow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, is there a cost for Andrea to, to take this credentialing? Is that uh, one of our... Good question. Yes, yeah, so we haven't gone to market with this yet. Um, our goal, because again, with an equity mission, we're really trying to help people who are being kept furthest from opportunity, which isn't to say that anyone can, of course, utilize these tools, right? There is no exclusivity here, but particularly we're trying to help uh, maybe someone like Andrea who doesn't have, let's say, a four-year degree or a master's degree or other ways of signaling her skills. So because of that, uh, our, our plan is for the learner earner to have no cost to participate in this and for those costs mm -hmm. to be um, shouldered by other entities, potentially such as workforce development organizations, career navigation systems, um, a lot of work still to be done to figure out the business model, but ultimately we want those costs to be um, picked up elsewhere and not on the learner's shoulders. Mm -hmm. when, when they have their, uh, thank you, uh, when they have that the content in the, the concept of my hub wallet, how does that get to the next stage? And is that something that uh, the individual then basically provides access to? Is, is, is that how that works? How does that piece get to the, the businesses? So those records can be shared. Mm -hmm. Though I will say, actually, what you're starting to poke at is part of our X credit phase two work. Uh, um, now, I wasn't originally planning to show this, but I think it actually helps answer your question. So let me just show you a vision of where this ecosystem is going next. So you can see, of course, uh, the year one ecosystem, which I've already shared with you today. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, beginning April 1st, when phase two kicks off, we're looking to expand the ecosystem from this to this. <laughs> All right. And the pieces in V1 are what you see in green here. Everything in orange is new. And you can see, John, to answer your question, that really focusing on that connection from my hub into employer hiring systems is a key piece of the next phase of this work. And a lot of that has to do with working with employers. Um, uh, there's a lot of buy-in and a lot of um, learning that has to happen because I'm sure people on this call will not be surprised to hear that employers are still a little skeptical, right? They tend to still prioritize the degree over the credentials, and it doesn't have to be an either either or proposition, but they still tend to be a little bit skepti skeptical about credentials, um, largely due in part to the vast, vast number of them out there and the limited quality assurance that is in place. You just kind of never know what you're getting. So we're working both on the technical integration pieces there, but also on bringing a select group of employers along with us to do some pilots. Wow, great, great. That is, uh, th that's excellent. What do, you, what do you think is the, the release timing of your, your next phase? Uh, is that something you're targeting for 2022, 2023? 
the, the assessments that we have developed in year one of X credit, we're hoping to be able to go to market with that subset of assessments this year. Now that is not going to be the full ecosystem, right? With everything just functioning beautifully, because we've got a lot of kinks to work out on the integration side of things, but the assessments themselves uh, will be ready um, probably by summer or fall of this year for, you know, broader use. Wow, that's great. Well, Tara, thanks so much for uh, taking us through that. That's that's got to be one of the most uh, complex ecosystems that I've ever seen hooked together. Uh, and so it's it's really neat to see the diversity. Normally, when we talk about ecosystems, it's the it's the same system: CRM, HR, customer service, uh, perhaps. But to see that you're just going to really all these different systems that are out there and and tying uh, disparate systems together into one solid solution workflow is uh, innovative and advanced. So it's pretty cool, uh, as everybody's saying on online here. So uh, thanks so much uh, for that. Wow, Graham, any uh, any comments on that as I go to wrap up? No, I mean, I think <clears throat> that's why it's, you know, it's really great to be working with X Credit on this kind of thing, because we're definitely big believers that the future of learning is very open. There's going to be information coming from a lot of different data sources. But to take that philosophy or that future vision and actually see it turning into something concrete that actually makes total sense uh, is, is pretty exciting. Yeah, how about it? How about it? So for all of us on the call today that are where uh, Graham started off with uh, delivering courses. Don't feel bad. Uh, that's, you know, I think that's still where the, uh, the base of, of everybody is, but you can really see now, you know, what, what the progress that's coming and uh, the innovation that's coming. Um, one thing I, we didn't even get a comment on that I just loved is, is that concept of automation of, of taking it from at the end of a training plan or at the end of a certification to, to do something, to integrating it right into the daily workflow of the learning and using that to, to drive collaboration, drive gamification, drive other activities that in, increase that ef efficacy and increase that, uh, that, that learning engagement. Uh, all of those uh, you know, super important here as we have the remote workforce, it's only gonna get more remote, uh, more diverse uh, going forward. Uh, so the, the automation uh, features of that but extending that, of course, into the skills, into the competencies and the goals and really making it now something that's uh, that's tangible and impacts uh, or can impact uh, a lot of different aspects of a learner's uh, life, both work and, and professional. And then the last takeaway is is really just to see it all come home with, with, with Tara of, of how you can take all these theoreticals and, and see now how just imagine how better that'll be for all those military professionals to take all that credit that they have and translate it into something that helps them get a job, helps them get a pe better paying job and a more fruitful career and impact on society. All that stuff is, is pretty awesome in my opinion and just the beginning of uh, what inter intelligent learning platforms uh, will be able to, to provide. So Graham, Tara, thanks so much uh, for taking the time to, to join us on our 91st episode of the Talented Learning uh, Thought Leadership Series. Uh, attendees, thanks for tuning in to another one. If we didn't get into all your questions, as mentioned, we'll, we'll, we'll follow up on that uh, individually to make sure that we get it answered. But thanks for all the collaboration and interactivity. Uh, we'd love to connect with you. So you can jump on any of our LinkedIn uh, profiles, connect and uh, let us know what you thought about today. Uh, we'd appreciate it. Um, you can email uh, us at, at these email addresses. If you want to talk to Tara about that, just do it through her LinkedIn. It would probably be the easiest way. Uh, and you can ask her a question there and certainly visit our websites, including uh, eddesignlab.org, uh, where you can see more uh, information on the X Credit project, as well as all the other cool things that they're doing uh, with micro credentials, as well as jump on site for learning, of course, to you get a deeper dive. The site itself is every bit as cool as uh, as the LMS to, to get a, a good understanding of, of what the application can do in all these areas that you're probably not used to. So uh, with that, have a great day. Thanks so much for joining and we hope to see you next month. Right. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Sarah. Bye everyone. Bye.